Okay, hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you've had a great Mortic Conference Global so far. So for this session, I'm delighted to be joined by Tim, Leo and Dirk, who all join us from Germany today. They're going to be talking about business applications with low code Mortic and tape. And this is a pre-recorded session, but the folks are all here. So if you have questions during the session that you want them to answer, you can pop them in the Q&A and we can actually answer them as we're going using the comments. Also do feel free to use the emojis if you want to at any point during the presentation. So I don't know if you wanted to say a quick hi and wave everyone before we Hello. start the video. <laughs> we are hi. here for real. Yeah. Awesome, so here we go and on with, with the session. Hello, everyone. Uh, we are here in the session of business applications with low code, and I'm happy to have Tim from Tape with me. Hello. Hi. Um, this session, we want to cover a great extension. I would not even call it an extension. I would call it a, a symbiosis between low code and marketing automation. So marketing automation benefits quite a lot from extensions and symbiosis with other systems with integration because it gives you a much better view on a customer and a much better ways with additional data to have a personalized communication. Also the evaluation, how your marketing campaigns run, um, make it interesting to connect Mautic and marketing automation with other tools. So process don't even stop at marketing. Um, after you are successful with marketing, you have your salespeople and they have their sales process. So everything should go nicely hand, uh, hand in hand together. And uh, this is what this session is about. We are talking about low code. For sure, there is no no code. Have you ever heard about no code? I don't believe in it. Uh, you always need a little code. And the good thing with tape, which we see today, is that it's so much de developer focused. And even for a guy like me, who is not a developer, I'm a business administration and IT guy, um, I can work with that as a consultant. and. Uh, have a little helpers of the integration. So also uh, low code is a good economical alternative to big systems, especially if you grow a business, this will help you. And also with grown businesses as we see today. Mautic and extension. Sometimes I get the feeling it looks like this. Um, we also worked with several layers of integration, connected them together. So in some um, installations, we uh, use an additional integration layer, something like Node-RED, which is also open source. Uh, also, Zapier, we almost never use that. And also Integromats, getting expensive. And also adds the trouble. You have more hands on your data in terms of data privacy, data protection. You should really limit how many parties you involve in your processes. And uh, also, if you have more components, it means more setup costs and also more maintenance cost. So um, I was especially um, happy to find tape uh, because it's kind of an integration layer and an application layer together. So it uh, really removes the need of having an additional integration layer. You have much more transparency in your processes and um, uh, Tim, how about data protection? What about this topic with you? Does it make it any easier for European users? Definitely. So we, of course, with German regulations and law, um, it was uh, really important to us to basically um, honor like highest security and data protection standards and be GDPR compliant and everything. So we didn't really have a choice there. Um, yes. so that's why we had to go all the way. That's good. So. Um, I have a, a data compliant, a GDPR compliant solution with no need of an additional third party layer. But there's also a business requirement. If you look into marketing reality today, uh, if I look in my uh, small and medium enterprise clients, some of them uh, don't have a real good CRM system. So you're working with a black box. You have your marketing automation. And if they have no uh, uh, system that receives new leads, um, you kind of push them blindly into their email inbox. When you never know, are they working right, right now with it or do they leave it for the seven days? I don't know. 
and then they tell you, oh, the lead is not that good because it's old, but they don't tell you. So you also need a little transparency as a marketing guy or marketing agency to see how your leads end up, how they are processed, how good they are. It's also important to get feedback from your clients if you need to adjust something in your marketing campaigns, because it's always learning and adjusting and testing. So um, uh, a low code could also help you with that because um, you have transparency. You can, before you send something into their black box, you have some uh, transparent system in between, which you can work with your clients on. And you see how many leads came in, from which campaign, from which form, from, yeah, from, from which marketing effort. So that's why I, I would say that um, a, bit, a bit more low code with a user interface adds more intelligence to your marketing automation system. So with this uh, intelligence, uh, of course, this low-code tool should make it easy for you as a marketing guy as well. And uh, what I liked about this is that um, Tape came with a great code editor, which we will have a look in a moment. So you are quickly able to find errors, for instance, and also debugging and talking to the Mautic API is much easier with that. You can uh, track uh, the lo in logs, you can see what happened if something goes wrong and it's most of the time because I cannot code. <laughs> I'm I'm just, a, uh, I'm not a developer. That's why it helped me a lot when we set up those scripts uh, required for connecting with Mautic and sharing data and synchronizing data. So, but Tim, that's uh, now your take for intro. Uh, uh, in, in, introduce us to tape. What's the system all about? Yeah, um, so my name is Tim. I'm a co-founder of tape and we are a local platform from Germany. And our goal is to um, enable our users to basically build their own customizable workspaces. So what does that mean? Um, it, it means um, you create your space where you actually build your processes, your data. Um, and our um, proposition is that you can actually do that within a couple of minutes. So no need to kind of have a large IT project um, um, because you know best how your business works. And you can basically mold that into the system just by changing it along the way. And um, you'll have to experience it. That's the easiest yeah. way to try. So, so maybe you show us. Uh, I mean, the code editor is quite interesting for the developers. The other good idea is, which I want to add for agencies who, are, who may be using this, you can have uh, a workspace for every client, right? So you can yeah, and share course. access. Right. For example, that and um, just to conclude that, so we we focus on these customizable workspaces. We have built-in automations, um, mm -hmm. which is important to us. So you don't That's need great. another integration automation layer. Um, you can actually use the built-in tape workflows to do that and to integrate with all sorts of systems. For example, Mautic. We'll see mm -hmm. that later on. And um, our focus is on open standards and open source technology. So that's why we support JavaScript, TypeScript in our code editors. Um, and we also emphasize the use of HTML instead of proprietary technology. And that's why with code, you basically have no limits. Show us the editor. OK, um, let me share my screen for a sec. OK, can you see something? Yep, it's coming up. So what you're seeing right now is one workflow on tape. And um, we, we focus on the code editor for now. Um, uh, it's actually very, yeah, it's actually very intuitive to use. So what you can do here is you can just type and auto completion will assist you. And you actually have um, like static typing via TypeScript. You see the variable headers is being declared there on top. And if I access this property it will kind of help me like that it's not available and will help me like um, mm -hmm. auto complete my code in a style that should actually work in the end. And um, yeah, so this is really intuitive to use. Um, it's a fully fledged Node.js environment, so you can write your custom code here. And that's actually all it takes to update something in, in, in Mautic via the API. Um, and you know what the killer feature is? The killer feature is that you receive webhooks and you can send them as well. So the receiving of webhooks is uh, really a differentiator for, for tape. Um, because also Mautic offers a lot of webhooks and sends data with it. Uh, so I was really pleased to see that even for com, for for uh, um, uh, handling, for pro processing a webhook, there was no much effort needed. Yeah. That was great. All right. So let's have a look into uh, tape for Mautic, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll hand back to you the screen share. Yeah. 
to check shared screen. So some some basic things first. We use base out authentication, uh, base out uh, via HTTPS, so it's easy to set up and still secure. Um, the API user can be it should be a specific user, which you can also restrict in their access rights. So um, the API user doesn't need to manage everything, right? Um, we will have a look right away. We start with uh, a, a, a workspace that's used for setup. This means. I, as I'm lazy, I don't want to type in um, base keys and, and URLs everywhere because I then may also may make mistakes when copy and pasting them. So we have a central workspace that holds the uh, URL that's important, for instance, the, the base URL for the system. Then also uh, for other uh, calculations, I have the Mautic API base URL, for instance. Um, there's also a hidden field that contains the key. Of course, you can also hide it. And uh, but it's in this record, and we will pull from that when we need it. So um, just a simple system here. We have contacts, we have companies. They are in sync with uh, Mautic. Um, we have uh, yeah. Let's let's give it a try. What happens? What happens? So we have a, a form here, and we create a new user. And that's Tim from Tape. Tape. Tim. At tapeapp.com. And he also sends us a message because it could, of course, be a, a, a prospecting uh, form, a landing page form, for instance. So I submitted in the background. Uh, Mautic sends a webhook to our system for a for a form submission, and uh, we will have a look what happens with a form submission. It will also um, sync the new contact. We will um, look into it. You see it's already connected to the new created company tape. We also have a link back to this contact. So we see in Mautic also the connection to tape, and he was added by the form, of course, and now we want to uh, correct his name, I guess. <laughs> Let's make it Tim. And uh, another automation will run. And we have a look. Yeah, of course, his name is now con corrected. It's Tim Schmidt. Yeah, what happens if we delete from one system to another one? Uh, let's start with deleting the company in Mautic. Um, that's a tip. And what we did here for the automation is we say, OK, um, it could be a mistake that we deleted uh, tape on this uh, system. Definitely it is a mistake. Uh, when we look into companies, it's still there, but we marked it as a deleted company. So it's kind of a fallback that helps us to correct mistakes. Um, and it also uh, allows you to handle them with an automation, for instance. So you delete them every 30 days or not every 30 days, but 30 days after being uh, added to this um, to this condition. And the same thing we can do in Mautic, because if I now going uh, to, to delete um, Tim in tape, because he may have changed the company, whatever, and uh, then it will be deleted. And the same thing happens here. We do not read. We do not really delete him. We only mark him tape deleted as a tag. And of course, we have a segment where after the next cron job, cron job runs, uh, he will be in this uh, segment. And we can have, of course, a an, an campaign that also automatically cleans them up after a grace period. What happened in between? Uh, we also said I want to have a kind of a debug solution to find out what happened, why did it work or why did it not work. And uh, so I extended uh, some of those automations with uh, more inf more data. So um, this was at the time we are recording this. I see uh, the payload sent was tape deleted for the multi contact ID 334. The tape record, of course, isn't there anymore if I look into it because we deleted it. But uh, we only marked him deleted, so we can still find Tim here with the tag tab tape deleted. Um, that's the payload that we sent. That's the response we receive. 
And I was a bit surprised when I saw it the first time um, the, that API is pretty talkative. Is it what do you say or chatty? Um, it gives you the complete uh, record. By the way, when I suggested uh, if that's the right way to do it, I, I got um, feedback from other Mautic users that said, oh, we're glad it's there because we are saving one call. OK, fair enough. Um, I also write down which system or no, which system, which automation triggered that API call. So it's easy for me to find out if something goes wrong, uh, what was causing this. And as you can see here, data we put into the variable payload send data. You see that here as the output of the script. And also the response from the HTTP patch uh, command will be um, catched, catched, caught by uh, this variable uh, being exported. And now I can create this new a record in the API log where I collect the payload send, the payload response, uh, the source, uh, the automation link, uh, which brings me directly back to the, to the automation and also the related uh, contacts. So easy way to debug, easy way to check if something is broken. Um, so far, very stable, uh, no surprises. Uh, only when I did something wrong, but even then it helped me to debug my issue because most of the time it's layer eight, as we say, uh, a layer eight problem by the people and uh, uh, works pretty stable. So um, what else do we want to show here? Yeah, deals. That's the, the, Let's have another look. We have tables here. We have different ways to show data. You can filter it, of course. Um, it's like, yeah, it's like, uh, an access database in the cloud, as I would always call low code solutions, but much more comfortable, of course. And um, I also have deals and you see the, the formula that we just um, uh, sent uh, with Tim's request uh, ended up becoming a, a new lead. I did not add all the relations yet. This was just quickly before our record. But now you see you can also add data like uh, this was a, an, an earlier deal connected to the company, um, aligned with the sales phase, uh, getting also a revenue a revenue number, um, which I can then also use to calculate it, multiplied with a multiplier from the current phase. So you have a, a gewichted. What is gewichted? A gewichted sales pipeline. Like a weighted or? Yeah, like a weighted uh, pipeline. Um, because for instance, if you say, Everything that's in qualified, you see, drag and drop, no problem. Uh, everything that's qualified, uh, you know, you make maybe one deal out of four qualified leads, then you can multiply it by by uh, twenty five percent, and you know what your weighted pipeline um, will be. The good thing is, which we did not show yet, you can also switch here to a table view, and uh, you can easily then uh, calculate numbers, uh, sum up, and you have a sum. And if you do this with the with the weighted uh, revenue, you have a weighted pipeline. So much things to do. You can filter it by week, by month, whatever. So um, this is really what I mean with you you're getting quick results, and it's very flexible also for your processes. When we started ten years ago, we almost had all our business processes in low code, and it was really efficient and nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's about how we used Mautic, how we quickly set up um, those uh, API calls and webhooks uh, via automations in Mautic. Uh, and we, no, not via <laughs> automations in Mautic, via automations in tape, but also uh, nicely working together with the campaigns in Mautic. Um, to say, as we currently use text for syncing, we could also put people into segments, put people into um uh yeah segments and and campaigns um but that's uh, that's future story if you look at this uh if you look into our workspace you see there's some work in progress which is hidden um of course your uh, the good thing is with tape receiving webhooks you can easily imagine that it could also receive google ad leads or facebook ad leads pretty easy and then you can forward them right away to your Mautic uh, marketing automation campaign Great stuff, uh, really, really good. Uh, let me switch back to our presentation. Yeah, so that's the demo. What else do we have? Um, we have the uh, synchronization. We established the relation between contact and companies. We synchronize uh, the values between two systems. 
We can also handle tags. I mean, not natively, but we found a way how to do this with category fields generating into tags or also having a, a, a text field um, being able to maintain tags overall for Mautic and tip. So, and I said um, that uh, uh, Mautic and tape is a great solution, uh, a quick solution also for smaller, medium sized uh, uh, or just started companies. Uh, we already have a couple of clients running that system. And uh, one company, for instance, is Langenheine in Dresden, which is a watch manufacturer, handcrafted, very exclusive with premium materials. And their, their uh, watches are of limited uh, quantity. So you cannot buy a hundred thousand of them like you can do with other luxury brands. They are exclusive. And um, then you think, OK, so how do they benefit from marketing automation? How do they benefit from low code? But uh, especially if you are an, an, a manufacturer with uh, high requirements of individual communication, uh, this combination helps them also to be quick with a uh, with a response which fits the needs of their international clients and um, also they handle processes that are not so directly marketing related for instance they have uh, they, they manage their um, uh, open days is open door base so you can visit the manufacturer manufacturing place so they handle uh, all those processes or also, if they send out, out their catalogs, if you request a catalog, um, this will be supported by automated processes in um, tape and in Mautic. Yeah, so what does it mean for marketing? Even if you have a traditional handcrafted shop, even modern marketing can still help you and, and uh, give a great customer experience. Yeah, that's it for our introduction, what we've done so far. and. Uh, I'm really sold. I'm really happy with it. I'm. I have good client projects. I could solve solutions that I could not do natively with Mautic. Just to mention two of them. Have you ever tried to send an amount, a limited amount of coupons out of Mautic? Not possible without an extension. Or, uh, yeah, or maybe uh, changing dates in a form. Uh, things like that. Um, so you can work together with with a uh, uh, tape, and it uh, just is a advanced experience. Now we have an offer for you to make as well. Tim, maybe you would tell us what do we want to offer for the Mautic community, for the people who are right now want to start with getting tape uh, running with their Mautic instance? Yeah, so obviously the way you framed it is exactly the way uh, we view it. Um, it should be running, right? It should be tried on, hands on um, and experience instead of just looking at us too, like um, bragging about it. So I guess the best thing would be to try it out. And that's why um, we want to offer um, 30 days um, of a free uh, full feature um, usage in tape. So usually that would be the higher plan, including yep. the automations and everything. True. Um, but we want um, um, to allow people to try the entire thing for 30 days. For wow, free. Tim, that's, that's great. Um, but um, let me be a bit more pushing. You say 30 days, I think they should have it a bit more time, right? I mean, they are busy. They are all busy. They need to have some fun time with uh, tape before they make a decision. Now, Dirk, you're really, you're really squeezing us here. But um, I, I guess because I heard that you also have something valuable on your plate, if you were to give that out for free as well, um, oh. I assume we could increase the number, let's say, to 60 days. So we'll oh, make that's 60 days. Right. What about you? So, okay. So what do you say if I put in the, the important scripts that you need to get started with it for free? Sounds like a good combo. Yeah, I think so. There's a lot of time to start. And uh, yeah, that's I would call it a deal. So you give 60 days, I give scripts, and uh, you people, you join us in the forum and share your experiences and uh, ideas you came up with. And uh, we will be around and also help you if you run into any trouble. Looking forward to work with you. Thank you, Tim, very much. Thank um, you. Very. That's, I think that's really a, a good offer. So run now. The, also, those coupons are limited. It's not like endless. Uh, go to twzn.de slash tape. twzn.de slash tape. You see it. You can also see the link in the chat or ask us because 
we will be with you in the uh, Q&A session now. Uh, uh, Tim will be with us and, and, and Leo and me, and you can ask us any questions, um, ideas you come up with. Let's discuss. We're looking forward to meet you. Yeah, looking forward. Thank you very much and see you in a moment. Okay, thank you folks for that enlightening presentation. I think that was really interesting to see, Derek, how you're using that for clients. Um, I'll bring up a question which was kind of answered in the um, chat, but I think it would be helpful for people to uh, uh, to have in the video because the people on YouTube won't necessarily see the, the chat comments. So is there a plugin available for the tape integration? So did someone want to take this one on? Uh, maybe, maybe I say it from the Baltic uh, part of it. Uh, the good news is no extension needed. It's really using the native API and it's using the webhooks. Uh, so there is no need for a plugin, which also um, removes any maintenance or updates uh, things as long as the API is running and good. That's um, that's the that, point, yeah. That's awesome. So you literally don't need to put anything into your Maltic instance except for turn on the API. You don't need to do anything funky with tape. It's supported out of the box. It sounds like a really great way to, to get started. Exactly, yeah. So also, uh, I had good time with the um, local tool to learn more about the API in the last days and weeks. So uh, it was also helpful to answer a couple <laughs> of questions in the forum people had with the API. And uh, then sometimes it was really, you, you're just holding it wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes when you're first getting started with the API, I can remember, because I'm not from a development background, the first few times I started trying to test the API, it was very confusing because you can make one small change and it just doesn't work. But you don't know what that small change is because you maybe haven't got the experience. So yeah, thank you for helping people like me who get into that pickle. <laughs> so I had a question. So you talked about integrating tape with Mortic and we mostly talked about that during, during your presentation. But can you go into a bit more detail about like other systems that people might be using that they might be able to bring into the mix with tape and how that might expand what they can do with the software? So maybe Leo or Tim, uh, what other marketing related uh, software are you aware of that have been integrated with with uh, uh, tape? Uh, otherwise, I will add one more as well. Um, so at the moment we um, we doesn't uh, integrate with uh, integrate with more tools than Mautic in the marketing. Um, no, about, not about Mautic comparison. More like other marketing tools that would add to this scenario. What we did was, some, for example, Intercom. Uh, you mm -hmm. probably know Intercom yes, as a like yeah, fully fledged yeah. uh, solution, customer um, relations solution. We integrated that one. Basically, everything that has an API can be integrated to tape. That's the cool thing. Um, and if the if the external system offers webhooks, for example, maybe you're aware of Discourse. Probably yes, right? Yep. Because of the the multi community uses it as well. And um, Discourse also has, um, for example, webhooks. So we use that to collect stuff from the tape community um, into our own tape organization to streamline our process, which is cool. So what do you do with the Discord then? Is it um, op what, what is the type of integration? I, I only know it as a chat tool. Sorry, I'm Dirk. Discourse, right? Ah, discourse. The, 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 the forums, not the discourse. Forum discourse. Okay. Yeah, not Discord. Discourse, and we use that one um, basically just to trigger to trigger a notification for us if there's a new post on the forum, um, if there's something going on, so we can react quickly and ask questions. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that you were pretty quick when I asked on, uh, asked questions. Ah, now you know why. Yeah. Yes, because we in tape we 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 use tape as our main platform. So and we have all systems come together in tape. And when there's a new comment in um, in intercom or something, and we get directly via the webhook uh, notification, and then we can assign the issue to a developer or to someone in our team. And so we have one platform where we have um, where everything comes together. And I think that's that's the main purpose of of tape and and the uh, open API and the automations. Yeah, actually, we also started with another low-code platform 10 years ago using yes. it. 
And for whatever reason, we left this path, but we are getting back to it because having the things combined in one engine yeah. uh, saves so much other trouble you may have. So mm -hmm. um, it's, it can, I mean, we are seeing it from the applications other people use with Mautic together with tape, like this application, uh, what is it, this uh, HR application application we built for another company who feed uh, webhooks from their HR marketing part into tape. In mm -hmm. tape, they will be working on the process, kind of screen them first, and they say, okay, they get an invitation to an interview. There also, it kicks in that they uh, maintain their interview dates within tape, and this uh, automation will automatically update the uh, selection of the Mautic form. So only uh, appointments that are in the future and still have spaces left will be in that form. That's also a pretty great, great thing, which I was missing always in the past. That's really great. Thanks, guys, for uh, going into those that detail. Uh, so we have another question, which I think the answer is just going to be use the API. Uh, but have you got integrations with Drupal? So we have a lot of people in the Mautic community who will have some kind of content management system that powers the front end of their website. So how would that? How would you see that integrating with with um, with tape? Definitely, I think there was there was already an answer by by one of our participants here, and that, that's exactly the answer. So the cool thing is because Tape can use webhook can receive webhooks and react to them, and Tape also has an open API um, that you can use. Basically, if the external system has those two things as well or one of them, um, you can basically integrate everything you want. It will require some um, yeah a little bit of tweaking, and of course you'll have to know the APIs to make the proper um, integration, just like um, what Dirk and I did over the last weeks um, for Mautic and Tape. But once that is over with, um, you can basically do anything you want. Um, and um, what we offer as well is um, if you get stuck on something, we can also assist you with that. So um, if anyone wants to integrate Drupal, we can maybe help with a base use case or with a, with a dummy that you can use as a head start. Oh, you are muted. You know you've got to do it at least once every conference, right? <laughs> Forget to come off mute. Yeah. Thank you, John, for asking that question. And thanks, guys, for answering it as well. Um, we have another one from Rob. I think we're OK for time. Could you give us one or two practical use cases of a tape and Mautic um, instances working together to offer value to a customer. So I'm not sure maybe if Dirk wants to answer this one or whoever wants to yep. pick this one up. Yeah, that's true. Um, actually, uh, this is what I meant with the black box before, that sometimes if your marketing person and your client only has old, outdated CRM ERP systems that they misuse as a CRM and it's on-premise, you cannot even connect with an API there, uh, we place a tape session in between and together with our clients, we have transparency about our marketing processes. Do they work? Do they give the right results? Um, so I let them also kind of categorize those leads to, to find out uh, if we need to change uh, the focus of our marketing approach or if we change the, the target groups. So this is kind of, it gives, it removes this black box. It makes it transparent in the work of an agency with the client. Uh, what uh, results did I deliver and were they, were they any good? This is one thing. Um, but on the other hand, I could also have my own um, uh, tape uh, installation where I manage uh, um, the Mautic um, instances from my clients, um, set up automations I can do with them. Uh, that's, that's the second thing. I think it's much easier to, to handle a couple of Mautic instances for different clients uh, with automations. But also um, very practical situations um, uh, quality of salutations. If you think about, uh, maybe if you're not a German, you may not feel the pain so much, but uh, uh, to have a good salutation, to say, sehr geehrter Herr or sehr geehrte Frau, with all the ge genders, it will change uh, how you greet someone. It's not like dear first name, last name. Uh, it's like, do you even have a first name or last name? So we wrote a little script that considers all of those different variables. Are they there or not? I, I use ChatGPT to code in that case. <laughs> I think uh, Tim was uh, laughing about me. <laughs> I'm not sure. Not really. But, I was nope. amazed, Dirk. That was an amazing <laughs> use case. Like Dirk basically used ChatGPT to write the JavaScript, and because Tape uses simple JavaScript, um, he could just inject it and, and leverage it inside Tape. That was cool. 
okay, it's always needed still to uh, test if 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 you if, if you got the right inst uh, instruction to ChatGPT and if it understood correctly, just like when I'm talking to any other programmer as well. Uh, so, but I could test the results also. Now we have for this uh, luxury watch uh, company, uh, uh, we have it in two languages. So this script checks which language the client has. It checks which gender it is uh, of of many. Also, do we have a first name or a last name? And uh, if it's if we don't have a first name and last name, but it's of type press, also PR, then they do not write dear, they write dear editorial team. So uh, the salutation, we, we cannot calculate it within Mautic because if you do that with try with dynamic content or with uh, with fields that are empty, you end up with two spaces, for instance, if, if the field is empty. So uh, this is something with an automation will do. Uh, we get the data from... Uh, from the webhook, from a new contact, uh, the automation will run, generate the salutation. Um, and if they don't override it, they have a field, they can override it, can make a very individual salutation. Uh, but if it's not there, it takes the calculated one, writes it back into the salutation field in Mautic. And we only need one field as a salutation and it fixes all problems. So that's one very practical thing. And uh, the other, there was one more question also, um, also this code distribution stuff. When we had people going to trade shows and they have like a thousand contacts or two thousand, whatever, but they only have a hundred coupons, um, and not enough coupons for everyone, uh, there is no such list, a thing like I have a limited list in Mautic, and uh, as long as I have coupon codes, uh, they will be distributed. Uh, and now it's just the campaign is uh, pulling a coupon code from tape as long as there is any. If there is none, it said, I'm sorry, uh, we are running out of coupons. So that's our things that very practical allow you to make much better campaigns with a little bit of automation and calculation, which you cannot do today within Mautic. Awesome. My mind is slightly blown by the potential that you could leverage with that, as well as integrating with all the different systems that you use. Like if, if it has an API, you can do it basically by the sounds of it. So. Yeah, yeah like I mean, Google Ads, fantastic. Google Lead Ads, Google Lead Ads was two minutes effort to get the webhook out of Google Ads, Lead Ads, and feed it into the same database. Yeah, awesome, awesome. Okay, um, I had another question. Oh, I should put it on a question so that the lovely people on YouTube afterwards will be able to see it. Uh, uh, you talked about what's there now, but could you talk a little bit maybe about your roadmap in relation to like allowing people to do more with tape or with Mautic or both? Mm -hmm. Maybe platform first, huh? Leo, would you like to take, that? take over? Yes. So what we're planning with tape uh, in terms of new features. Um, so we have a, um, on, a public roadmap. Um, you can always check it on tapeapp.com slash roadmap. And uh, there we are, uh, have all the new features planned and uh, the state updated. At the moment, we, are, we will focus for the next months on a very flexible canvas. So at the moment, you, what, what Dirk shows, showed you in tape were our databases. So um, in tape, we call it an app type. And at the moment, we have databases and we will enlarge it to dashboards and very powerful web forms. So, and we totally want to rebuild um, our, our canvas, our basic canvas, to get even more uh, benefit in the, in the CRM use case and to give the, uh, give the people the uh, much more power or flexibility to create uh, their forms. And um, uh, on top, we want to deliver um, uh, front, because at the moment we have very strong backend automation, so you can receive webhooks and and trigger on special dates and um, stuff like that. But we want also to bring front end automations to tape so that you that the user directly get, gets feed, feedback when he um, um, clicks on a field or on a button that's, that's, uh, that something is disappearing or some buttons appear. And we want also to enable like um, screen flows like um, people uh, know from Salesforce um, that people can design their whole business processes on, on tape and integrate with multiple other tools, get the data together in one place. So this is our main focus for the next months, to build this um, canvas, this totally flexible canvas, 
which can um, live without a user in the in the web. So um, at the moment, you can very easily um, um, share stuff from tape. So you can build all your your use case in tape and can share it to the web, and then can duplicate it into another tape instance. So. Uh, everybody knows how much uh, work is it to, to build a complex use case for a niche where um, he has the domain knowledge. And tape makes it very easy to duplicate this, uh, this use case. Um, we can duplicate uh, to another tape instance with all the automations, all the relations you build um, with one click. And at the moment, we enlarge the uh, published web feature um, to multiple uh, workspace sharing. So you, you can now build uh, like a whole um, software on tape with all your integrations um, and connect it um, over multiple workspaces and then just duplicate it, it to another customer or client. That is at the moment the, the main uh, um, focus in development. Cool. Yeah, and this uh, actually awesome. also Thank extends you. the possibilities of consultants. Uh, just that you said that you can also build uh, applications that you can click by click, copy and paste. I mean, we have this already a bit with our offer now that uh, you can clone a workspace with existing scripts. Um, but yes, I'm also looking forward how we can help you with even more advanced scripts that uh, may even take you some help or... Uh, um, set up or services. So we are also trying to find out how we can best support the community with, uh, with the integrations with tape in case uh, it's too difficult for some who are not at all coders, but want to benefit from the flexibility of such a platform. So uh, we, is, nothing is set in stone yet. We do not have uh, defined uh, plans yet, but we want to work uh, with, a t with the community also find out what's needed uh, to offer um, create services and uh, product on top of tape. Awesome. Thank you all so much for being involved and telling us all about what's what's possible with this. Uh, I think it sounds really interesting. I'm sure there's lots of people in the audience and people who are watching this later who will be really interested in taking this up and figuring out how it could, how it could work for them. So yeah, thank you. And thanks for the offer that you've both made to help people kind of get jump started with this. It's amazing. Um, so after this session, will you folks be available on the table in the lounge for people to chat with if they want to talk with you one on one about any questions? Of course. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. For me, I am in the awesome. next 15 minutes um, because I have another. Okay, perfect. But I'm here also tomorrow. So can also continue tomorrow okay. with discussions. Uh, by the um, way, also so if, if, if when... people people locked uh, uh, registered and find out they have uh, more questions, we will most likely also do a webinar in the next couple of weeks, uh, uh, maybe one or two weeks after they had a chance to try out to uh, help uh, if there's help needed and also in the forum. J just That's one thing. Awesome. Jo mm -hmm. Just one thing I wanted to add. Um, um, in case you, in case anybody wants to try it out, like um, Dirk mentioned that before, be sure to use the link provided, and be sh be sure to use our mm -hmm. our Head Start template because otherwise it could be a little overwhelming in terms of what you'll have to build in in the first place. That's why we bootstrap that template. So if anybody wants to sign up, um, feel free to use our material. Be sure to use it because it will make things way easier for you. Awesome. Yeah. Why reinvent the wheel when you can just borrow it from someone else? <laughs> Perfect. That's great. Thanks so much, everyone. So if you want to catch up with the folk who've been in this conversation, so Tim, Dirk or Leo, head over to the lounge in Air Meet and you'll find a table that says room one follow up. I think it says room one follow up or something like that. Um, they'll be there for a little while afterwards. You can go and ask any questions that you might have. Um, and yeah, thanks very much, guys. Also on the right hand side, uh, there's a session feedback tab. So if people have got any feedback for the speakers, we'd love you to just take a moment to fill that in uh, before you leave the session. So thanks very much and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks everyone Thank for joining. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.